Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's Record Review, the always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who is using a clickbaity title that implies negativity. I'm talking about Dinosaur Jr. and their new album, Sweep It Into Space. And as you can tell from the title, I'm saying I have not liked Dinosaur Jr. for 30 years. Yes, it is the 30th anniversary of me first saying, eh, I don't know. Okay, I guess. I don't really like them. And one thing I like to do on this channel is investigate my opinions, investigate my feelings. Sometimes I know why I feel a certain way, sometimes I don't. And so I wanted to do a sort of analysis of what has made it that for three decades, this band, which by all rights, I really should like, they come from my home state, you know, they are a rock band that reminds me a lot of Neil Young, one of my favorite artists of all time. There is no good reason for me not to like Dinosaur Jr. So what I've done is, there's basically two reasons why I have a bias against a band, I've discovered, in general. Uh, the first one is misogyny. That doesn't play in here. There's no women in this group. And the second one is some form of self-loathing. Now, I don't want to get too philosophical for you, but I think if you analyze the things that you hate, uh, you usually end up at understanding that there's something about it that you hate within yourself. And with Dinosaur Jr., it's not that far to get to. It's not that hard to understand. You see, 30 years ago, the first time I said, I don't like Dinosaur Jr., I hadn't ever heard of them. The first time I heard of them was when somebody came and saw my band playing. At that point, our name was Pez. That was the name of our band back in 91. And, and they heard us and they said, oh, and I could tell they didn't like the music. And they're like, you really remind me of Dinosaur Jr., I was like, huh, that's interesting. I'll have to check it out. I think I've heard of them. And you know, and then we played again, you know? And so another person came up and said, you know, you, you really, uh, hey, how was it? Did you like it? And you know how when people don't like something, they try to answer a different question? Hey, did you like it? Oh, you know, you really remind me of Dinosaur Jr. <laughs> and, and what I came to realize is that, at least in the early 90s, comparing a band to Dinosaur Jr. was essentially a way of telling them you suck, I don't like you, but I'm not just going to say that. I was ne we were never compared to Dinosaur Jr. by people who liked or understood Dinosaur Jr. You see, whenever you have a non-traditional lead singer, okay, like a lead singer who doesn't necessarily have a super strong voice or doesn't sing in a conventional way, people get a little bit freaked out. They don't know what to say. And for a long time, they would just say, oh, you know, uh, very Dylan-esque. Mm, reminds me a little bit of, of Neil Young. And then eventually, very Lou Reed style vocals, which is just a semi-polite way of saying, uh, <laughs> you can't sing, and unlike these other people I'm comparing you to, you can't pull it off either, but I'm just going to say it to be nice. In the mid 80s, Dinosaur Jr. appeared and they became much more popular in the 90s with a wave of grunge. Jay Maskus, the lead singer of Dinosaur Jr., joined that pantheon of singers where you could sort of damn with comparison. So this must have been the reason why. I, mu I, I went out, I remember which album I bought. I went to Mystery Train Records in uh, Harvard Square and I bought You're Living All Over Me by Dinosaur Jr. And I put it in, in my tape deck and I listened and, and it was like, it just all, I understood it immediately. Like, oh, it's guitar music and the singer is a little bit annoying. So I was hurt. I was hurt by this comparison, not because we were better than Dinosaur Jr., we weren't, but just because I knew what that comparison meant. So, 30 years later, what can I do? Well, thank thankfully I have this channel and I can listen to their music. And I can say, as you might guess, if you are a faithful viewer of this channel, you might guess my conclusion is I have been an idiot for a long time. I was missing the point. They're great. <laughs> all those things I just said, like good guitar-led band with an interesting singer, it's all there. And the reason that I was able to go back to Dinosaur Jr. is for another bizarre personal reason. My nephew is you know, 23, 24 years old, uh, and, and he is like oddly musically curious for a young person, right? Like he's not just into new music, he's into old music. And uh, we, we were at the Record Archive here in Rochester, 
and, and he bought a Lemonheads CD. I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a blast from the past. And he's like, you know, Unky Sky, are there other good 90s albums that you can suggest to me? You know, and I sort of like, I kind of like went through my sort of like, like all the bands I could think of. Pavement, yeah, 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 I know Pavement. I was like, um, obviously you have all the Nirvana and, and all the good Pearl Jam stuff, and okay. Sonic Youth, yeah, 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 I already done Sonic Youth. I was trying to think, Lemonheads, Boston, Boston, Dinosaur Jr. And I got him to get Dinosaur Jr.'s 1991 album, whatever that one's called. And I realized when we were listening to it, uh, it's good. Like, it's good. They've always been good. They've always been a good band. <laughs> They've always been solid. And now with this new album, I listen to it, and the things that I thought were annoying before was really just this feeling of, uh, of insecurity about myself. So this is the thing. Uh, the, the, the overarching phantom over so much of the 90s, when we think about 90s music, really is the looming figure of Neil Young. He's just so dominant. He's such a dominant force. At the time, he was called the godfather of grunge and the sort of godfather of indie music, but I still think it was understated how important he was. And what I would compare this new album to, the thing I would compare it most to, is a 90s Neil Young album. I'm speaking both sonically and spiritually, because Dinosaur Jr., and I've spent the last couple of days listening to their entire catalog. Um, uh, they don't change too much, okay? Uh, we could listen to Sweep Into Space, and you could have told me this album actually came out in 2007. I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. And you could play me uh, one of their first couple albums and say it just came out after this one, and I'd say that makes sense. This kind of amazing consistency, this kind of awesome, laid-back, hard-rocking music reminds me a lot of Neil Young in the 90s. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, like a masterpiece like Sleeps With Angels, but something maybe like Broken Arrow, which if you know Neil Young's output in the 90s, all of his music was great, but just like a Neil Young and Crazy Horse album, sort of, the ability that Neil Young has is the ability that Dinosaur Jr. has to just press a button that just sort of says, rock, and they rock, but it's not in that obnoxious way. It's not in that Jack Black school of rock way of rock, you know? There's no like, this is rock, everybody, and we're doing it. And take that, all you keyboards with your blips and bloops and hipping and hopping. It's not that at all. It's just a band which, much like Neil Young, just authentically rocks. And they just play and they play and they keep going and trends come and trends go. And in a way, this album is like the oldest and the youngest album you could possibly have. It sounds like it's transplanted from the 90s, but at no point does it feel like it is consciously trying to evoke the 90s. Nothing about this seems like a conscious throwback. The same way that I never got the feeling that Neil Young was ever trying to throw back to his earlier work whenever he made an album that sounded like an album he made before. It is just this extremely honest expression of rock and roll. And it's very, very good, very enjoyable. Lyrically, this album is, again, so very 90s, it's, it's funny. It's like, there's this thing with indie music, which I think we've evolved out of, of just sort of like vague lyrics of sort of discontent, vague lyrics of quasi-self-loathing, sort of layaboutism, lassitude, lots of other words for just kind of being lazy, like saying nothing, but saying nothing with conviction. Like you get the sense, you just start playing chords and it's like, you're talking to me, I'm talking alone when you got home. <laughs> just sort of like, not terrible, right? But just definitely not ambitious statements. There's no political statements on this album. I mean, there may be, but they're very hidden. There's no particularly personal statements. There may be, but they're kind of hidden. But it's just sort of this wall of rock music. And something that's nice is having a band that's been around for so long where they're not perfectionists. They don't seem to be ambitious or trying to reinvent themselves or anything. Just sort of making the music and putting it out there. And for some reason, it doesn't rub me the wrong way, you know? Um, Foo Fighters and Pearl Jam, other kind of like rockin' 90s survivors. Um, I, 
I, I, I literally like have a very difficult time listening to their music. And I, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm saying I have a difficult time listening to it. I don't enjoy it. And uh, sometime I'll, I'll go into that more in depth. But this doesn't have that. So there we have it. There's my overall take on the new Dinosaur Jr. album. It could be an old Dinosaur Jr. album. It helps me to understand what I've been missing. So let me, let, me, let me take you through track by track. It won't take too long to go track by track because frankly, most of the album is amazingly the same, but not in a bad way. Let's start off with the first track. This is gonna be my homework for you to listen to. If you've never heard Dinosaur Jr., this is as good as any other track to understand Dinosaur Jr. To the credit of this wonderful three-piece band, okay, that's been a three-piece band forever and has been doing it forever and ever and ever and ever, this song, I Ain't, as far as I can tell, is just as good as any song from their entire catalog as a way of understanding their aesthetic and their approach to music. Here is a link to it up there. You have this great grungy sound. It's catchy, many different layered guitars, these lyrics of vague kind of isolation. I ain't good alone, I can't quite face it. Really great production on the album. There was this thing in the 90s where it was actually difficult to produce a good rock album. Like, it's a lot easier now with technology, but it was really hard to get drums sounding good and guitars sounding good. The whole album just sounds like, like the kind of album that indie bands tried and failed to make the entire decade of the 90s, and they managed to do it here. It's just this song where the first time I listened, I was like, oh, that's okay. Then the second time I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then by the third time, like, I'm just psyched. I love this song. It has everything that is great about their music. Wonderful guitar work all the way through, good bass work, hardworking drumming, and his voice. That's why it hurt me. When people compared our band to Dinosaur Jr., it's because they didn't understand us and they didn't understand Dinosaur Jr. His voice is so fragile and so strong. It's, it's whiny, but it's not like complaining. And it is completely evergreen. You can't tell, I can't tell, this was not recorded in 1992. Just with the strength and the fragility of his voice. There's a small anomaly in this song compared to the rest of the album. There's a female voice that makes these little sounds uh, in the back of the chorus, which isn't there. Um, and the guitar solo on this, uh, on this song is a little bit muted. Did you know that people can still make albums with guitar solos? <laughs> because Dinosaur Jr. is going to blow your socks off. And again, not in that annoying Jack Black school of rock way of like, it's rock. Just like a band that makes music and they just, they just, they want space for guitar solos. And that is seen in the next track, I Met the Stones, which almost feels like a parody of a rocking song. At times it reminds me of uh, Now I Want to Be Your Man. I mean, I Want to Be Your Dog by uh, uh, by the Stooges, just the kind of the soundscape there. Uh, the first kind of blistering solo. I do like the idea of him singing about meeting the Rolling Stones. Because you never think about like, of course, you know, Pearl Jam has met the Rolling Stones. Of course, right? But like, Dinosaur Jr. When would Dinosaur Jr., a band that never quite made it, but has been popular, ever actually meet the Rolling Stones? You know, it's sort of like, uh, you know, did the members of Deep Purple ever meet Elvis Presley? It's like, I, I, I probably, probably, probably not, <laughs> right? Um, next track is called To Be Waiting. Beautifully layered guitars. Again, just gives me that good Neil Young feeling. Lyrics about waiting, that's a very 90s thing as well. And it's part of the problem of these lyrics where it just seems like they're just writing words that just come out of their mouth. Um, they even do the super duper old school rock and roll thing of building up with playing a, a floor tom and a snare. Do, 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 do. Like, like it, this isn't a, a, a snarky meta commentary on rock and roll, right? This isn't some kind of like, oh, can you believe we're doing this? It is a good trick to do. It's a good trick to do. It's been done to death. And as far as I can tell, Dinosaur Jr. just kept doing it. I Ran Away is another just very straight rock and roll track. A beautiful chorus with another great blistering guitar solo. 
The next track is called Garden. And this is cool because Lou Barlow, I believe, does vocals on here. And he has a very different vocal style, um, very um, kind of sweet, like not really whiny, a little bit more sweet. Uh, again, it's worth paying attention to the mixing on this song. There's so many sounds happening. Uh, there's a clarity all throughout this album, a clarity of sound, which is surprising. Hide Another Round is one of my favorites. It's kind of like I Ain't. It's a little bit more catchy, a little bit less like, I wouldn't even go, I wouldn't go so far as to say pop, but like even now as I say the title, come on, let's hide it. Let's hide another round. And I don't get what the lyrics mean at all. I don't know what it means to hide another round, but I think that's a good sign. It's something I don't quite understand. And Me uh, is my least favorite track on here because it's this weird hi-hat sound. Tss, tss, tss. It's just really loud and invasive, and I don't quite get it. There is a moment, though, where there's like an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar playing at the same time, and uh, that's kind of like that, the dum 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 dum. It's like, it feels like I am back in a recording studio in Boston in the 90s with some guy, you know, at, at the mixing board saying, well, what if we put like an acoustic underneath here, you know? I expect it always. Um, has my favorite lyrics on the album, Thinking Doesn't Pay. <laughs> I don't know, I like that. Another, like, this is the most of the blistering guitar solos of like the uh, Take It Back is a super necessary song. It's a complete shift from the rest of the album. It's a piano and, and guitar, like kind of shuffle, like between the fifths. Um, the voice becomes a lot more intimate, a little bit less like um, overbearing, has a very cool bridge. And this is uh, a nice thing that this album does where it's sort of like, it's, it, it follows its formula and then it breaks it up a couple times. It starts off a little bit different and then it has the Lou Barlow vocals and then here it has Take It Back, which is quite different. Nse is a sweet song with kind of an annoying chorus. Walking To You, by this point of the album, it, the, like the, that fear of it becoming generic shows up a little bit because it's just kind of like these four chords, like do, 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 you know? Um, but there are cool kind of guitar sounds added in in the bridge. Um, but by this point, I was a little bit tired of the album. Fortunately, it ends with You Wonder. And I like that it ends with Lou Barlow again singing. I assume this is Lou Barlow singing. I know it's not Jay Maskus. It, could, it must be Lou Barlow. Um, but what's nice is he has a little bit more of an earnest tone to his voice. He's not quite whiny. He's much more sweet. And it's a really cool way to end the album. And the album ends fittingly with another guitar riff. So there you go. There's my journey through Dinosaur Jr. And I hope this, I hope this format is interesting where I talk so much about myself. I do it, um, well, because it's interesting, I think, to me. Well, it's definitely interesting to me. It might be interesting to you. The interest I hope you get is just thinking about the way our taste is made and the relationship between how we think of ourselves and how that can actually impact our taste. And how we can develop a bias and just never check it. And the uh, sharing this experience with you, I hope will help you sort of have a kind of your own thing where you go, wait, why do I hate this one band? And it might be for a reason as silly as people who don't like your music comparing you to them. So anyways, I'm very happy this album came out. Uh, I've been texting with my nephew. He's like, yeah, they're great. So I, I guess I suggested uh, the right thing. Let's all enjoy Dinosaur Jr. who are Continuing to rock. All right, uh, well, so I'm getting a little thirsty here. I don't know what I'm gonna review next. If you're here this late, you can leave a comment with what you think I should review next. I think I'm going to do that Ethel Kane EP, but I, but I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm open. All right, there's the camera.